Okay, we're back. So I found me a 10 amp fuse. She's plenty good enough. What do we need? Turn that up. Okay, where's my test light at? Yeah, it all works. All right, so we have ignition and the starter. It even worked. All right. If your ignition sucks 10 amps, you got a problem. Five amps should have been enough for the ignition. Well, we'll run 10. 20 is kind of overkill. Okay, so we know where that goes now. It goes to the coil. I don't know where the black wire goes, but I think it's a ground. We'll deal with that later. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and figure out this ignition over here. So, lots of, lots of stuff to do here. We'll get some crappy plug wire. A decent coil, but nothing super fancy. It's got brass screws in it instead of aluminum, so that means it costs more. The aluminum are the cheapest ones. This is your module, which is the Alton module, which is made by Dyna. Basically, it's a Dyna S2000. Dyna 2000. Oh, Dyna S. Dyna S is a different one. That's a dyna ignition. So you're going to set to all the stuff you need to do. So you need something to do the switches with. So I use the driver. So you can even read the instructions. Just come off the module right here. So switch one. Let me switch one out. Those. Normal is off. Off is down. Simple. Switch two and three. Is that five? Where do we go here? Switch two and three is advance curve. We want maximum number one off. And off. Rev limiter. I like 6500. So we'll go with off and on. 6000, I usually hit too easy. And then we got the uh, single or dual fire. Single is on. There we go. Four offs, two ons. Done. That ain't hard to do, is it? So all you do is hook this up. Here's the instruction sheets. Tells you how to do all that. What I care about is wiring. So there's your ignition curve. We went to the maximum curve. And you go over here, wiring. We have this color right here. So you have to hook it up like this. So the white is hot, and uh, blue is front, pink is rear. So white is the hot wire, so that means this white one right here goes to the center of the coil. Pretty straightforward. Can we get us some wire terminals in here? Uh, not really. Get these real crappy ones here. We use those. They didn't spend any extra money on those, that's for sure. Okay, this we have to fish through the motor. Here's our ignition rotor pickup. Need that. 
They used to give you a screw in here for that. Looks like they ran out of screws. They don't give them to you anymore. Or it's hidden somewhere else. It's probably in a different bag. There's your rotor. Uh, there's your screw right there. So these are cut to fit, which means you have to cut them, strip them, and put your own terminal on there where you want it to be. So there's our screw we needed. Right through there, that goes on the end of the cam. And we have to get a socket over here for holding it. Probably this one right here. Yep, that's the guy. Okay, straightforward. <clears throat> Just put it down there on top of the rotor, on top of the cam. <clears throat> Make sure the notch in the rotor lines up with the notch in the cam. If it doesn't, it don't work very well. If the screw does not go in the cam, don't force it. Like I'm doing. It doesn't want to go in there anymore. That's pretty tight. That will break before it goes all the way in. That would disappoint somebody. So I could go back and forth a few times and kind of get things to get friendly with each other. These are not the world's best screws. I've had issues. So we take a little bit of assembly lube. Lubricate the threads so we don't keep tearing them up. Get a good layer on there. We just keep screwing this back and forth until it goes all the way on. to burnish the threads to fit. Other brand screws work a lot easier. Now you have to know the limitations of what the torque the screw will take. It's best to only go a few turns tight and bring it back out. Going out more times is a lot better than forcing it and snapping the pig off in there. That time went all the way in now this time. That's pretty much all the way in without going nearly as much pressure as it was. One more time. And we bottomed out right there. So nice and easy now. <clears throat> Does look the same. I don't care about the Loctite part. Okay, get the screw in and going. And find where the notch is. I know the notch is toward the back here somewhere, and that's where the dimple is, so you find the spot where it goes right in. It's right there. enough torque. Alright, it's in there. <clears throat> now if you rotate the motor over it should go nice and concentric and not wobble. So 
so that one looks good. It's equal on both sides, so I'm sure that's good. That's pretty good torque in there, so that should be good enough for that. Okay. Pull out these old screws. Our ignition. It's best to put the wire in first. Evos have a big hole here, shovelheads don't. If you're going to run electronic ignition in an old point ignition bike, you're going to have to open that hole up. <coughs> yeah, throat. Okay, the module should be up in the air like this. Jeez, too much talking. So I'll put it past the wire first and then rotate it over like that. In a second here. <coughs> A little better. <clears throat> Something to drink. <clears throat> Can't be getting dehydrated after five hours. Okay, so after you get it where it needs to be, you go ahead and put your screw in there. Make sure you stay off the wire and don't pinch the wire. Go down until you touch, it should be a nice firm stop, and back off a little bit. Same on this side. You go down until you touch, back off a little bit till it's free. The module should be able to move it. So I usually like to have a little bit of a pigtail in here so you don't run out of wire. So you're going to have to figure out how you want to do this when you have all this excess in here. You can go like that or you can push it around the back side of that screw. But you got to be able to rotate this thing so <clears throat> it's best to go like this. A little bit of extra. Yeah, too much. Suck it up a little bit. There, I like it like that. <clears throat> All right. Now, usually when it's timed, it's about the positions about over here. That's usually about where time's in at. We don't know yet because you got to turn the motor over to where it's supposed to be. Okay, this goes underneath this plate right here. This is how your late motors are done in the 90s. The earlier motors had like a little clip, and this was flat right here. Here's where our oil leak's coming from, at least one of them. Come out of that screw right there. See, I got oil in that screw. Jam it up tight against the cover and put the plate down. Okay, good and tight. Okay, that's in. Okay, now you got to root this thing up. You go up the seat post tube here and up over the top of the motor. You how I do it. Some guys run them up behind the carpet up through here and go up that direction. It's just a matter of where you want the wire to stick through up. 
Now, no matter what you do, I like running behind the oil pump and keep it up high off of the frame, above the frame height. frame first and come up the other side over here so do not go underneath the frame rail if you hit bomb down on the ground you cut it off Probably should run it on the other side of the cable here. That way when you pull the clutch cable out it comes out easily. You're not wrapped around the damn thing. You always gotta look at how other things interact with what you're doing. It'll make the bike easy to work on so don't do stupid stuff. <clears throat> it works easier. Make sure there's no knots or twists in your line here. Alright, so I got a cone across the top of the clutch cable, so the clutch cable will just pull right out to replace it. We're underneath the oil pump here, above the frame rail. You go across that tube right there, and we just come up the back side of that line, so you can pull the line out easily down the road also. So we'll just go right up against the frame rail there, put a couple zip ties on there, you'll be fine. I don't like coming up next to the exhaust pipe. I like going to the other side of the tube on this other side. It'd be the opposite with the pipe is up. That way you don't have any chance of getting the wire too hot. So make sure you stay away from your shift linkage over there though. We'll be jamming it into that. Alright. Out of my way. All right. Once you're up here, you bring it up along the top of the frame. And these will drop down behind the coil over here. Up high. Most of that you couldn't see because my elbow was in the way and too low. All right, so you can see how the wire goes behind the frame rail, comes around the other side. We're way away from the exhaust system. We're way away from the shift linkage over here. We come right up through here. Circle on up. Go underneath the zip tie like right this one is. And we go right up next to this other one over to here. And then it drops off the coil, which will be back behind the mount there. So we'll be on this side of the bike over here, though. All right, so that'll work quick and simple. Well, that looks good. I'm good with that. Okay, so where's our coil at? Cheap-ass wire terminals. Here's our coil. It's over there. Plug wire. All the appropriate tools. Strippers and crimpers. Dikes are missing now. I don't know where they went to. They're missing. Wonderful. All right. And I'm gonna have to go find my tools and find my heavy duty spark plug cable crimpers. 
don't know what they're out right now. I'll have to go hunt those out. <clears throat> All right, so now we're over here on this side. Go ahead and work on the foil part of the bike over here. All right. So here's our new coil. It's going to go right on here like that. You try putting on the inside if you want, but it hits on the heads too much, so it goes on the outside. This will just, just go around here and hook onto this. Okay, so we had what white, blue, and pink, I think, are the ones we're using. So these are the ones we're going to use. The violet is always for the bow switch. And I guess this is for attack, which we don't have. And we don't have a bow switch either, so these two are not being used. Do not cut these off and throw them away because when you do custom programming, you need these wires. So what usually I do is I cut them a little bit and I'll stick them back inside the harness here. Slide them up in here a little bit. Just so they're not touching each other. So there's that one. So you just shorten them a little bit so they're not equal. <clears throat> so we'll just clip this one off a little bit. So it's in a totally different spot. Move it around a little bit. Let's get that one out of the way. There you go. So those are right there to be used if we need them. They're not going to short against each other. They're fine. Okay, this is going to go up here like that. I have to figure out how much this is going to hang down to our coil under here. We do need to have a little bit of length here for our cable, so to get down here. Alright, so I'm going to get a couple zip ties. Button this up, we'll be back.